Hello, my name is Matthew Valencia, and I'm a senior editor with The Economist. I'm delighted to say that I'm joined today by Frank Calderoni, the chairman and CEO of Anaplan, uh, the global cloud-based uh, software company. Hi, Frank. It's good to see you. Hi, Matthew. Great to be here. Um, well, thanks for your time. Look, I'll dive straight in, if I may, with a with, uh, first question. Where... We're a year now into the pandemic. It, it, it seems hard to believe, I know, but uh, I was wondering if you could give give me a sense of what it's been like for you and your business over the past year. Yeah, it's amazing that it's uh, it has been a year. But I have to say that uh, I've been very proud of the way our employees um, have been resilient and persevered throughout many of the challenges over the past year. I, I think most people miss the face to face interaction. But I think, you know, if I, if I look back, we're seeing some great benefits uh, from the situation. I, I think the virtual setting has leveled the playing field. And I think what I've seen is more collaboration, especially on a global uh, standpoint, where, uh, you know, although no one's commuting to and from work, there seems to be um, a greater transparency um, as a result of this uh, video environment. And then more empathy, um, more empathy to one another, not only from a business standpoint, but I think from a personal and from a kind of a social conscious awakening that has happened, I think, around the world, uh, realizing that companies um, are really um, dealing with more than just their business. They're dealing with the, the society overall. And so some of the things that we've done across Anaplan this past year uh, we're putting health and safety first of our employees. Um, we've offered quite a bit of flexibility, uh, different uh, ability to kind of do things so they can balance personal and professional. We've had uh, situations where we've offered some well-being days, uh, where we take we close down for certain days. Uh, we've reimbursed for work from home, you know, stipends so people can buy some equipment and things like that. Uh, we've also uh, had a more frequent communication. I found that. You know, connecting with people more, uh, even not only about the business, but talking about some of the social issues, some of the pandemic issues, has caused people to better connect. And then the last thing well, I think we, we just recently uh, started is kind of uh, what we call Focus Fridays, where we have no meeting days, right? So people can concentrate more on some of the things they have to get done. So it's, it's, been, a, it's been a long year, but I think um, everyone has endured. Well, it, it's... It's good to hear that some positives have come out of it, and also very good to hear that there's there's more empathy around. We we could certainly do with with more of that. What what about your customers? What have you learned about them and about about the challenges uh, for them during this this crisis? I, I think the first thing I would say is um, you know because of all the unprecedented change that every company has had to deal with, agility and resilience has been uh, really top of mind. You know, I think we've seen companies that have had to really pull back uh, those in industries like hotel and entertainment, where the business has kind of been completely disrupted. We've also seen companies uh, like grocery and food where they've had to ramp up, right? So you have two ends of the spectrum. And so understanding that um, this environment had, has caused them significant change that they've really never experienced before, understanding what that change is all about. Uh, and how best to deal with it, I think it's been top of mind. And I think the other thing, similar to what I just mentioned before, is there's been uh, more of a focus around um, the outside of the business, you know, the, the social, the culture, the character of organizations, and how people have to endure, um, and the connection uh, of that. I, I've talked to a lot of uh, CEOs and customers, and I, I think in my entire career, this is probably the first time where, you know, CEOs and executives are talking about social issues. They're talking about the future of the workplace. They're talking about the political landscape. And these conversations really didn't happen as often as they're having now. Right. And, and what, what do you think sets apart the companies that have been able to, to navigate all of this successfully? I know that you'll have been very much focused on your own business, but, but when you look across the landscape in your sector, what, what, what do you think uh, sets the better companies apart? So I, I think there's, there's been always a focus on uh, digital transformation, but I think in this environment, um, 
becoming digital um, has been much more relevant. And I think companies that were thinking about uh, transforming more digitally prior to the pandemic are now seeing it as being a necessity uh, because it's gonna allow their business to really respond to the environment and also uh, from a competitive standpoint, allow them to keep up with, uh, with their competitors. So it, it's brought a sense of urgency um, and acceleration of a lot of the digital transformation. I, I think it's also brought you know, a, a better culture of like collaboration where um, there, there's a need to get a better connection across a, an enterprise or across an organization um, and, and get people out of silos. And the connectedness is allowing people to um, you know, collaborate with, with a certain set of information so intelligence, where they can make decisions, be empowered to make decisions, and see the result of those decisions play out for their business uh, and align that across their organization. You know, just to give an example, we had a global CPG company that's based in Europe that uh, really had to make some dramatic shifts, right? They have a, a broad portfolio of products and where, where some of their products like food uh, saw an acceleration and other products uh, which they had to kind of pull back, they, they needed a better collaboration and a better planning across their enterprise to know how to increase one and decrease the other in a very timely, real-time basis and allow that to kind of uh, ripple throughout the organization so they can get the right response and be responsive to the environment, but also be responsive to the customers. Right, so I mean, clearly agility is 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 really important. Um, can, can you give more of a sense of of how tr how companies can transform planning to be more agile and to be more responsive? Many companies, and you know, I've, I've been doing this for for a while, um, have been dealing with um, you know the siloed nature, especially large uh, companies and global companies. And so uh, they're, they're all dealing with uh, complexity in their business, uncertainty in the markets, and they, they need to be more nimble. Uh, they need to um, have much more intelligence, uh, have access to, 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 to new information, not only information within their company, but information around their company that's affecting their markets. And then they also need to collaborate, right? Collaborate, come out of the silos and collaborate. I think those, you know, being more nimble, having more intelligence, being better collaborators is critical for their success. And so how to connect these teams uh, with real-time information. Um, many of our customers have been leveraging Anaplan as a platform to be able to do that. You know, connect their plans uh, from one organization, from finance to supply chain to uh, sales, uh, be able to be more forward-looking um, rather than, you know, historically companies have been looking at historical trends, but you've got to be a more forward looking and you've got to model different scenarios because things are very uncertain and they're going to continue to be that way. And so looking at different scenarios is critical. So being, being able to be responsive to the change, anticipate the change, and then align their response uh, to that change. Uh, across an organization is really what I think makes uh, makes success. A another example, and I think this is really relevant when you think about the uh, the COVID environment. You know, we had a global healthcare company, um, again, large, um, complex business, where they were supporting the COVID nineteen testing centers, and they they were they were actually doing a lot of their work in spreadsheets, Excel spreadsheets, and they found that because of the increased demand responding in a very siloed nature in spreadsheets was not enough. And so what they had to do is they shifted over to Anaplan where they were able to do their forecasting, their capacity planning, and, and also their management of demand, uh, the management of the supply, I should say, uh, keeping that all aligned so they can respond to the ongoing increased needs for PPE uh, in the various uh, health centers that they had around the world. So, I mean, it, it sounds as if the business is getting more complex. Are you seeing more complexity? And if so, you know, how do you deal with that? And how do you sort of cut through that to sort of to uncover the kinds of insights that you need to make, you know, to make decisions with confidence? And, and, and I think, again, you know, complexity was highlighted 
uh, more so uh, in companies over the past year because of the, you know, the, the significant change and disruption that I think um, happened. And so understanding that complexity is always gonna be there, uh, but the secret to dealing with complexity is to try to get at uh, information easily and be able to respond quickly, I think is, is important. So some of the things I think I've seen over the past year is um, th there's a need for especially accessing um, information, both in the public environment as well as in a private environment. So having a platform that can kind of go between the two, I think is important. I think, um, you know, I mentioned this earlier, the importance of intelligence, uh, AI, ML, uh, you know, machine learning type information. I, I, I think again, um, companies have, have resorted over the past to information that they have that resides within the organization. And now that the environment is becoming much more critical to the uh, complexity or the change, that they need to get that insight. So accessing you know, predictive insights external, around the markets, around customers. Um, we have a new offering that we rolled out over the past year called Plan IQ, which accesses you know, through machine learning information both inside and outside an organization. And I think, it allows companies to be better at predicting outcomes and then having much more success um, as it aligns to that. You know, Gartner uh, came out and they said uh, that they had a study recently that said that organizations that build their sales plans uh, and don't incorporate third party data, predictive insights, uh, are clearly uh, going to be uh, inferior to others that do. And so um, I, I think that's, that's really top of mind. Again, Another example for us is we had a leading uh, SaaS company that uh, was able to leverage uh, predictive insights that Anaplan offers, and they modeled that in their sales performance management. And they were able to get uh, much better information about their customers, the buying pattern of their customers. And they actually were able to see in the time frame that they leveraged that information, three and a half times uh, improvement in their ability to target the right customers to enable them to be more successful in getting uh, sales. And at a time like this, there are, there are some really big short-term challenges, you know, there's triage to be done, but, but there's also the question of you know, long-term thinking, long-term planning, long-term goals. And, 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 and into that comes, I guess, innovation and thinking about being innovative and 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 looking in, looking to the longer term, can you give a sense of how you balance that and 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 particularly how you're doing it right now at a time you know when we're in a pandemic and it's 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 a really it's it's a really difficult time in terms of of uh, uh, getting both right. Yeah, I, I you know I, I can it's it's a great question. I can uh, you know think back even from Anaplan as a company, but also. Uh, many of the companies that we've been working with, you know, I mentioned at the beginning of our conversation, uh, be you know showing empathy within our employees, but we also have uh, you know shown a lot of empathy uh, with customers, where we listen and learn. And I think through that, you know, to answer your question, I think ourselves as well as uh, companies that I've been engaged with, the, the first thing is to act quickly today, right? I mean, it, it, there's no time to wait. Um, so leveraging information, as, as I just talked about to be able to respond for today's needs, I think is first. Second, I think it's really to accelerate and anticipate change, right? So, and that goes back to the point about being able to conduct um, different types of uh, getting information so that you can evaluate uh, different types of, of scenarios. And then I think the third is to, so, so the first two is kind of responding to today uh, anticipating a bit of the future, coming up with scenario planning. And I think the third is to think about how do you reinvent your business for tomorrow? And that goes back to the point about digitization um, and, 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 and transforming uh, many of the processes that companies have had to rely on up to this point, knowing that it's not going to be sustainable going forward. And how do you go through those transformations? And so I think a combination of all three is what's going to make and determine success. Great. Well, thank you very much, Frank. Uh, I'd love to keep going, but we're out of time. So uh, um, thank you very much indeed for, for talking to us and sharing your insights and, and, and good luck for the future with Anaplan.
Thank you, Matthew. Enjoyed the conversation. Appreciate the, uh, the dialogue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.